Just give me liberty Oh, give me liberty Everybody, thanks for uh, joining us. It's Kevin O'Neill from Turn to Liberty and Representative Paul Shepard. He's a representative in the state of Idaho. And we're going to be uh, going over a bill he has proposed this, uh, I guess this was last week. I think you guys, you might have put it through your uh, state committee up there. Um, but real quick, a little background on Mr. Shepard. Uh, he's, he's been in public services uh, for quite a long time. Uh, he's gone through um, county, uh, county political party, uh, school board, uh, uh, Crouch City Councilman, Reagan City Councilman, and um, Maybe uh, the Salmon River Cowboys, was that a uh, volunteer organization by chance, Mr. Shepard? Yeah. Yes. Fabulous. And um, as well as going through the Chamber of Commerce there as well, and he's uh, owns a business, a, a uh, sawmill and log home business, which is close to my heart because I actually made a living uh, installing wood ceilings for about five years uh, during the building boom down here. And I'd love to talk to you after this after our little talk here about that, if you have a few moments later on. But, um, so, so sir, thank you, uh, welcome, and, and thanks for joining us today here at Turn to Liberty. Yeah, well, thank you for the chance to discuss this bill. Exactly, and uh, thank you for filing it. So, uh, the, the, the conversation we're having today is over a bill he just submitted this past week uh, bill number 461 in the Idaho State Legislature uh, entitled State Sovereignty Responsibility Act. And to go uh, to give a quick summary, um, I think most of the audience is familiar with nullifying uh, you know, federal law at the state level, for instance. In this case, um, Mr. Shepard is putting forward legislation to basically procedurize this so it become a little bit more of a common business for the Idaho State assembly to deal with this instead of having it be a, uh, a big production he's put in place this particular bill which will basically uh, uh, put the steps in place for the state the state assembly through the existing process of passing bills to use ex pretty much the same process for invalidating federal law uh, uh, federal case law federal statutes administrative rulings that might be coming out of federal agencies and um, and I think uh, that's my quick description of this. Um, and I, I wanted to sort of, uh, you know, ask you a few questions about this. Um, but in general, uh, what's, what's the history behind this, this particular bill, uh, Representative Shepard? Had, uh, had this been a bill you'd been trying to file in the past? Or was this a bill that uh, maybe somebody inspired you to write? The, uh, I, I actually introduced, uh, or it was printed, introduced a to the committee and um, printed last year. And then we had a pretty long session with some controversy. And so the State Affairs Committee decided to put it off till this year. So he said he'd be sharing here this year. So I think this coming week, it'll actually go to the State Affairs Committee for a hearing. Great. I, I don't know if I shared this with you, but I did speak with uh, the chairman of that committee, uh, Lorsch, Lorschner, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Yeah, Tom. Tom Lurcher. He, he indicated to me he thought this was going to go the distance. So I thought that was a real positive, uh, you know, uh, uh, update that he gave me on the phone. Um, how, how are you feeling about the likelihood of, of this bill going through your, your subcommittee and then on to the, the full body for a vote? Well, I've been here 14 years and I've seen all kinds of things happen. But at this point, I'm optimistic. Fabulous. And it's kind of interesting, um, you know, uh, we've had a change of presidency. I, I can say uh, it, amongst the Liberty community, the people I speak with, um, it seems like people have sort of taken their foot off the gas a little bit in their activism. And, and I personally am advocating, you know, there's really no time to rest when it comes to uh, issues of liberty. That's exactly how I feel. I think it's all the more a good time to go forward. <laughs> How do you feel about the uh, governor's uh, uh, attitude towards a bill like this? Do you feel he might be on board for passing it? 
I think so, because I've, whenever I've had discussions with him over the years, he always seems to really, he brings up the Constitution and quotes it, and I think he totally supports the Constitution, and that's what this bill does. So I, I, I'm optimistic with him. I think this is great. So, so um, down here uh, at Turn to Liberty, we, we make a big effort to try to educate the masses, you know, the people who are, are members of our group. We also make a big effort to um, sort of help them build their skill set so they can be activists, so they can speak at public meetings. Uh, we um, so we've done some some homework on the Constitution amongst our people, and one of the one of the things I think was interesting, you know, the state of Idaho. Uh, being basically created as a state in 1890, you know, 100 and, 125 years after the founding of the United States, still enters the union of states with its full rights, just like it was one of the original 13 colonies and, and states. Um, you guys, yeah, there's, no, there's no special status because a state came in later than the original 13. So, so um, yeah, what I'm talking about, of course, as you know, is sovereignty. I mean, you guys are a sovereign state, the state of Idaho, living in this hybrid kind of dual constitutional environment, one being the federal constitution that we all know about, and of course, Idaho having their own state constitution. Um, I, I, I look out at the federal government. I see the problems that are that are being laid across our people. Um, you know, you I have to believe this is being driven by you know a passion of yours to try to right some of these wrongs. Um, what could you maybe uh, characterize? You know, how you got into this particular bill and sort of what drives you forward with with proposing um, these types of solutions for the people of Idaho. Sure. I guess you would say I've been interested in politics all my life, even in high school. My parents, my grandpa, we always talked uh, politics and constitution. And so I think I, I've, I've always been frustrated because I could, when I could see the, the courts or the federal government deviating from the intent of the constitution, then I would I just feel frustrated. What can I do about it? And I've wrestled with that for a lot of years. And now I finally figured out if we could bring that complaint to the legislature, run it through like any other bill. And then if the legislature agrees it's not constitutional, then we would uh, void it in Idaho. And that's the reason that's where you know, I did it. It would just seem frustrating. Every time we have a Supreme Court ruling, uh-oh, I just got to roll with it, I guess. Well, I think we, as a legislator, I have an oath of office that says I'll do something to uphold the Constitution, not just roll with it. So now I'm trying to do something. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, evil thrives when good men do nothing, and you're absolutely doing some good stuff here. Um, I, I know we spoke briefly uh, yesterday, and um, you know I just, I'll just mention that you know to the audience, you know, uh, as you know, as Turn to Liberty, you know, friends or members, you know, we're, we're really seeking to build activism. I, I personally, uh, Representative Shepard, I do plan to mimic your bill here in Florida and give it to my representative to submit uh, to to whatever committee makes sense to try to get it passed. And I really I want to advocate for the other you know 48 states, you know. Florida and Idaho is already on the list, but the rest of y'all, uh, please uh, do access uh, Representative Shepard's Bill H-461 so you guys can do the same in your state. So, so, so uh, one of the things I had mentioned to you yesterday was um, I think it's really responsible and, and, and uh, you know, adult of, of the state of Idaho to consider this bill, to, to pass this bill, because when there is a, a constitutional um, uh, I guess conflict between uh, the federal central government and the state of Idaho. Um, you know, the, the, the body possibly up there, the state assembly may not, you know, be accustomed with dealing with it. But you know, once your bill is passed, you know, it becomes a seems like a, a lesser. Uh, um, risky act for for the legislature to take up these issues and hence speed it up and not allow things to you know mm -hmm. stew or or have the people of Idaho get pissed off and feel like they need to act on their own. Um, what's what's your opinion about uh you know this particular bill and how it might actually help accelerate uh, the processing of of unconstitutional. Uh, uh, rulings coming out of Washington and, and landing in Idaho? Well, the fact that it just takes one legislator or any of our constituents bring something to us, and all we have to do then is introduce it as a bill and 
it's it's fairly simple and it's very clear cut what happens. You give your arguments, constitutional arguments, because my bill totally supports the Constitution. Uh, I could give you some examples of of uh, ones that I think should come up right away. Uh, I'd start like with Roe versus Wade. I, I think that was very unconstitutional, how that was uh, arrived at by the Supreme Court. The one man, one vote is another one. The House is supposed to be by popular vote, by by uh, republic, uh, uh, democratic form of government. The Senate's supposed to be by, by political subdivision or by geography. And in Idaho, it really hurts all our little counties that are no matter how big they are, if they don't have very much population, they have no voice. And and that wasn't the reason I know that's not correct, because the federal when the Supreme Court did that, they didn't do it to the federal government. They just did it to the states. And the Constitution very clearly says that the states can have a republic form of government. So I know they deviated from that with that ruling. The, another quick one is babies born in the U.S., that's only for families that are under U.S. jurisdiction. That's not people that sneak in and have a baby and then get on our ta our welfare rolls. That's a very costly mistake the Supreme Court made about babies born in the U.S. The babies born in the U.S. was about freed slaves and Native Americans or people that belong to this land, not from sneaky people. Another quick one is... Uh, is the new definition of marriage. That was not a correct Supreme Court ruling. It was very illegal changing the definition of marriage and taking sides in denominational interpretation and and making law. I mean, there's several constitutional reasons that was very illegal. Another one in the rules, this bill covers even executive rules of the federal government, like the EPA. We have one here I've been fighting for a long time. The EPA says the little suction dredge miners make pollution so therefore they have to have all these regulations and they're pretty well shut down because of this uh, permits they have to get and the permits don't even their job is pollution like sewer plants and settling ponds for industrial plants but they're they're calling these people making pollution just so they can control them and we need to avoid that immediately and that's an example of some of the things i think we need to do here Oh yeah, the list. The list is very long, and um, you know we have the these U, the UN. Uh, I wish you could remember their their uh, Agenda 21. I think they called it, if I'm remembering correctly, um, where they basically have this world government strategy to lay across um, you know our people as well. So yeah, protecting us from foreign foreign invaders like the United Nations. Um, uh, obviously, the EPA has apparently, in my opinion, sort of bought on to uh, you know the United Nations model for controlling the people, and I think has you know become basically an enemy, an enemy of sorts for for property owners. So um, I guess I wanted to mention to you, uh, as you already know, you know, there's a lot of constitutional officers. Um, you know, everybody in your building up there probably is. You know, the governor, legislatures, uh, judges, of course, states' attorneys. Now, some states, you know, identify constitutional officers a little different than others. Uh, court clerks are on that list. But one of the very important ones is uh, the sheriff. If, if you happen to be in a state that has sheriff. Um, I know there's a lot of states uh, like Connecticut, for instance, where I you know, spent the first 20 years of my life does not have a sheriff, which now that I live in Florida kind of horrifies me that those folks have no sheriff. But um, the sheriff, as you may or may not know, uh, is is somebody who can intercede between the people and their state uh, or the people and their and, and their federal uh, organ you know, laws as someone who can intercede and determine whether a particular law that that, that sheriff is looking at with regards to this person is constitutional or not and can then decide you know whether to pursue it have you had um you know as activists we're trying to educate everybody especially the sheriff have, have you had uh, some good luck up in idaho with your sheriff and you know what we would typically describe as a constitutional sheriff one who's sort of aware of, of you know the relationship he or she has between the people and the state have you had some good interactions with those folks up there Yes, I have. Our especially our Idaho County Sheriff and our uh, uh, Clearwater. Clearwater County Sheriff. Uh, he, uh, our uh, Idaho County Sheriff, said that he would protect our people and the little miners that I mentioned earlier. If the federal government's out of line enforcing things on them, he would 
uh, take care of that and pr protect his citizens because the sheriff is according to the constitution our top law enforcement person in our country is the sheriff so he and we we're really fortunate at least with part of our sheriffs but all of our uh, various people don't see it see it quite the same some of them think that the article 1 section 8 which tells you where the where the federal government's jurisdiction is and where primacy is, they, they see that primacy and they say, well, that's, that they're in charge because they have primacy. But primacy, when you read it, says they're in charge and they have primacy whenever they're constitutional. And if they deviate from the constitution, the, uh, primacy has a meaning and it has some qualifications. And being constitutional is, has to be there before you really have primacy. But Article 1, Section 8 also says the states have primacy on everything that, that's not designated in Article 1, Section 8 for the feds. The states have primacy. So they forget that part. They just read the first part that they have primacy. And that's what I run into with some of our state officials. Oh, yes. It, it horrifies me. Um... Uh, I don't want to get into too much uh, detail, but um, it's a second hand, um, and I'm not, I'm not actually a member of the Republicans, but um, the Republican Party locally um, vetted their candidate for sheriff, and one of the one of the people who I know who's a real patriot and an activist asked uh, the, sh the candidate for sheriff, uh, you know, what would you do if the federal government came in and said you had to do X, Y, and Z? And he's like, well, you know, if they're the federal government, I would do what they tell me. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's the wrong answer. Uh, right. <laughs> ask some questions first, you know, let's, 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 let's talk about the details. Uh, so I wasn't there, but, um, but it's, but, you know, as an activist, I try not to piss the sheriff off either, because I want to try to, you know, have a voice with them and educate them in these matters, because, um, you know, people's property is being taken all the time, um, eminent, not eminent domain, but um, asset forfeiture uh, type of laws. Um, Certainly, we don't want to have, uh, you know, foreign national creating war in our country and have them still be protected for their property, I would say. But if it's just a regular neighbor who's, you know, having a bad decade and, you know, now the state's coming in to take their house and take their vehicles because they had a bag of pot, for instance, um, you know, it's, it's kind of a murky where that's uh, where that person's property would be protected or where that person's property would be confiscated and sold by the sheriff's department, depending on where one lives. Um, all right. So so I'm, I really do hope this bill goes the distance. Uh, do you have some backers in, in on the House side, at least? And is, is there also a uh, similar bill ready to go on the Senate side so you guys can uh, match them up and, and get it done up there? Yes, I discuss it, but here we have to pass it to the House, and then I have to present it to the Senate committee, just like you have to pass it through the House committee. So I have to go right back to the Senate committee as soon as the House passes it, and then it goes to the House or Senate floor. So that here, that's how we have to do it. Okay. But I I have I have support on the Senate too, but I can't tell you. I mean, uh, I have no idea what what might happen, but it just seems logical. We all want want constitutionality but you know the big key that a lot of people don't realize that constant uh, the, the constitution means original intent if you're going to go by constitutional anyway if if you go by agendas is what i'm trying to say then then how many constitutions do you have so what we've got to be sure and clarify to people is it has to be original intent because we had a retired Supreme Court justice here speaking to some high school kids. He said, if you, if somebody asked him about the living constitution, he says, uh-oh, living constitution means a death to the constitution. And that's the way it is. We have to go by the original intent and then change it with constitutional amendment, not with interpretation by our agenda. And our oath of office doesn't give us really the agenda right. It doesn't say do what you think is best. It says do what the Constitution says. Uphold the Constitution. So that clarification, I think, is where people are missing it. Sure. I mean, educating the masses, again, you know, very important. I saw that your, um, your state assembly back in uh, 2014, uh, you might remember this Senate Bill uh, 1332, uh, prohibited any future federal gun laws to be enforced in the state of Idaho, effectively, uh, you know, a 10th um, Amendment nullification of federal law from, from that point forward. Were you, uh, at, were you part of that, uh, part of that effort? Yes, I, 
Yes, I was. Uh, that was a good one. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, ho hopefully, um, you know, this, this particular bill, this 461 we're talking about uh, earlier, um, you can get the whole team together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The whole Arizona's, Arizona's doing it too, I think. They're similar. I don't know. It's not exactly like this, but you yeah, might check on the Arizona. Yeah, I definitely will. And you may have advice for us. So, um, you know, activist groups are, are uh, you know, hodgepodge and, and, you know, not always uniform across the country. But in general, do you have any advice for activists like us as far as how we can best, you know, communicate with our representatives and how we can best, um, you know, how, we, how we, we can help representatives get their job done up there as well as, you know, point them in the direction we want them to go? Well, the opinions from the public anywhere nationwide, any opinions that come in the form of emails or letters to the representatives help them to see that there's concern out there and it helps reinforce them. Do you, do you uh, respond well to, uh, you know, boxes full of signed petitions, even if they're not like a real petition for, for, for the ballot box? I mean, does that, does that type of thing draw, draw your attention when you're hearing from us? Yeah, I like any way, anything that supports the principles that we need and are upholding our constitution, our morals, and our way of life. I like to, I don't care if it's our, our, uh, our, uh, Article 1 or, or 2 or whatever it is. I like, I like to, I think it's good when everybody, anybody will speak up and send a letter or, or email or whatever, supporting it wherever it is. I, um, I've been advocating to our Florida legislature since we have so many people retiring into Florida that they should take a serious look at nullifying the death tax, you know, the, uh, the estate tax, the federal estate tax. I haven't gotten any traction with them here yet, but uh, I told them if, if, if it's just the GOP or the Republicans control the Florida Assembly, you guys can be the first state to do it and have all the billionaire families move here because that would be what smart money would do. But I'll share, I share this idea with you to give you a, a chance. Yeah, what, what, what's your feeling about the uh, state tax from the federal government? Do you see that as double taxation and might that end up uh, being debated as whether it's constitutional or not in the Idaho assembly one day? Yeah, well, I haven't worked on that issue, but it sure does sound like double tax. Uh -huh. And no representation because whoever's getting taxed right. already died. Um, right, I agree. Uh, so it, it's you know it's kind of like a you know a money grab of sorts, so to speak. Uh, but um, first state to do it, as you know, is going to be the first state to have a whole bunch of billionaires moving into uh, into the state and taking up. <laughs> uh -huh. It's like a big uh, big poker chip. Uh, everybody wants to go for that one. Uh, oh, beautiful, uh, Mr. Uh, Representative Shepard. Um, so, for the rest of the audience here, how how can we uh, how can they reach out to you? Uh, is there a particular website uh, you want to point them towards, or um, if they have questions, yeah. they want to help yeah. out, how can they find you? Yeah, they can go to my website, or but or they can just as far as uh, you can go to the Idaho Legislature. Would probably be the best bet. Just email to the Idaho Legislature. And with your with your bill comments or or questions, and they usually get it to those those of us who are involved in that bill. Perfect. I'll, I'll uh, put that up here on the screen, that, on the screen later on today when we uh, edit this together, and, and so people. Can yeah, that's it. the simplest way, just to go to the Idaho legislature. Fabulous. Uh, well, well, Representative Shepard, I want to thank you for your time and, um, and, and for putting this bill forward. And I, I think I've, I'm thinking I'm on your weekly email newsletter if I understand how the website works. So hopefully I'll be getting updates on the progress of the bill. Would it, would it make sense for our people to call um, the rest of the members of your, uh, of your Idaho Assembly to urge them to uh, back uh, House Bill 461? That'd that be a very big help. That would be amazing. <laughs> okay. I'm going to do that. I'm going to definitely do that. And uh, I've got a couple other folks with big audiences, way bigger than mine, who I'll share this information with. And um, I'll tell them I'll be very professional and, uh, and let them know you support Idaho's effort to uh, put a process in place for nullification of unconstitutional federal law, um, federal case law and, and those uh, departments and agencies up there who are writing uh, administrative laws, we sometimes call it, mm -hmm. all of which could be 
unconstitutional. So um, I really hope uh, Idaho can take back their sovereignty fully um, and be in balance with the original intent of our Just constitutional. Just give me liberty, oh give me 